And on the opposite side, some drugs might promote the metabolism of other drugs that you're taking. So now you've got this web of drug metabolism and your body doesn't really know what to do. Do I need to metabolize this drug or do I need to keep this drug the way it is? Can I excrete this or not? Do I need to keep this in my body or not? Your body is completely discombobulated and unregulated. Vigor Steve here. So you messed yourself up using performance enhancing drugs and now you don't know what to do. You've got all of the side effects known to man, no matter how small, and you can't stop fixating on them. And now you're completely and utterly miserable in full pity me modes. You've got hair loss. You've got gyno. You've got acne. You've got hyperhidrosis. Hair is growing in places that it shouldn't be growing. You can't feel a good pump. You've got anxiety. You can't sleep, but you're sleeping during the day because you're almost narcoleptic. You can't feel your tip. You can't feel your shaft. You've got full erectile dysfunction. And in the blue moon that it does get hard, you have horrible libido. All of the side effects, you name them, you got them. All right, Polypharmacy got you in this position, but I got a solution for you. All you have to do is watch this video all the way to the end. But I know exactly what you're going to do. Polypharmacy got you here. The kitchen sink approach is what you're all about. And now we're going to use the kitchen sink approach yet again to get you out of this position. So now you turned yourself into a housewife and a mate. Don't worry. Coach Steve is here to rescue you. We're going to go on a holiday from your own bullshit. But before we can go on a holiday to Bali, a word from our sponsor. Oh wait, I don't have any sponsors. So the least you can do is like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Share this video with a friend who needs to fix themselves after overdoing and abusing the performance enhancing drugs. I know exactly who you're going to send this to. And yes, Ryan, you could benefit from this video highly. Watch it to the end. Oh, and if you're feeling generous, you can support this channel by joining the YouTube or Patreon memberships so you can vote for upcoming deep dives or join the Vigorous Q&A, which is always on Saturday. All right, let's get started. Here is my solution. Whatever it is that you're doing right now, whatever your protocol is, whatever it is that you're taking, just stop it. It's as simple as that. You discontinue everything you're doing right now. Polypharmacy got you into this position, so you need to do the exact opposite and take everything out, whatever it is that you're injecting, whatever it is that you're swallowing orally, whatever it is that you're applying topically, man, whatever it is that you're boofing, right? People still do that nowadays. Any administration you're out, stop it right now. What you have to do is figure out what the root cause is, and that is going to take some time. So after you discontinue everything, the first thing you're going to do is make a nice fat list of everything that you were taking and figure out what the half-life and the active life is so you know exactly the prognosis of your recovery. And if you were taking tesofensine and nandrolone decanoates and dutasteride, that's months of waiting, right? Tesofensine, what, nine-day half-life? Nandrolone decanoate might take 18 months to metabolize. And dutasteride is, what, four to five months before that's completely metabolized out of your body? So if you're currently suffering from post-finasteride or dutasteride syndrome, get ready. It's going to be a wild ride and it's going to take time. I already made a video about post-finasteride syndrome. I'll link that video at the end of this one. So now you have a rough timeline, an estimate of when you can expect to feel normal again. And it might take months. Yes, it might take months. You should have done this investigation before you started dabbling with particular performance enhancing drugs with a very long active life. But... Well, in this case, you're reactionary, not preventative. And now you're basically the same as all of those cookie cutter general practitioners out there. You walk into the office with a slew of side effects and they start writing your prescriptions upon prescriptions of medications to mitigate all of your issues. But they're probably going to make it worse, right? Medications to mitigate side effects have side effects of their own. And all of this could have been easily prevented if you did your research before you start dabbling with this polypharmacy of performance enhancing drugs. But again, reactionary versus preventative. Now, you're still going to have to do all of that research, figure out what the half-life, the active life, and the potential drug metabolism is, because each drug metabolizes differently. And certain drugs inhibit the metabolism of other drugs. And on the opposite side, some drugs might promote the metabolism of other drugs that you're taking. So now you've got this web 
of drug metabolism and your body doesn't really know what to do. Do I need to metabolize this drug or do I need to keep this drug the way it is? Can I excrete this or not? Do I need to keep this in my body or not? Your body is completely discombobulated and unregulated. And in order to speed up your research process, I'll link a couple of very important websites down below that you should bookmark. Their Wikipedia pages nonetheless containing a complete list of the cytochrome P450 enzymes and their respective modulators. Read those websites back and forth several times over to the point you're dreaming about SIP P450 enzymes. You should know exactly which of these enzymes metabolize drugs, which are their inhibitory compounds, and which are their inducers. This way, you know exactly how polypharmacy is going to react within your body. So even though I'm doing crazy drug combinations once in a while, I know exactly how each drug is metabolized and which drug might stay in my system longer or be excreted and metabolized faster. I mean, I used to help people beat the drug test for fuck's sake, and this is exactly the information, the basic human biology that you need to know to get the job done. And you also need to know this if you're going to undergo and subject yourself to polypharmacy. So as an example, using the SIP, three or four enzymes which are responsible for the metabolism of a lot of the performance enhancing drugs and supplements that we take for our overall fitness and bodybuilding aspirations. The SIP 3A4 metabolizes the aromatized inhibitor anastrozole, also known as Arimidex, or Ketoconazole, which is used as a hair loss prevention aid. Several SSRIs, including citrulline, also known as Zoloft, as well as codeine, tramadol, and diazepam, used as a sleep aid or as a painkiller. Diazepam is also known as Valium. And most of the sex hormones that you produce endogenously or administer exogenously are metabolized by the CYP3A4 enzymes. This includes testosterone and estradiol and most of the anabolic androgenic steroids that we take. Caffeine is metabolized by the CYP3A4 enzymes and so is cocaine, all metabolized through this pathway. But if you inhibit the CYP3A4 enzymes with cataconazole, so cataconazole is metabolized by the CYP3A4 enzymes and in its metabolism process, it also inhibits further metabolism of other drugs. So caniconazole is already a very big culprit, and I mentioned that in the post-finasteride syndrome. If you suffer from that and you still take caniconazole, but you discontinued the finasteride or the dutasteride, don't expect to recover anytime soon. Besides caniconazole, fluvoxamine, an SSRI, is also a very potent CYP3A4 enzyme inhibitor. And so is ciprofloxacin, which is a commonly used antibiotic, especially when you suffer from food poisoning. The compounds bergamotin, naringin, and naringenin found in grapefruit, also very potent CYP3 or 4 enzyme inhibitors. I even made a video about that. I'll link it at the end of this one. And valerian root, which is commonly found in sleep uh, formulas, as well as a couple other drugs like vilproic acid, or even berberine, niacin, and ginkgo biloba, they all inhibit the CYP3 or 4 enzymes. So which one of these are you currently taking? Your CYP3 or 4 enzymes are just as confused as you are, and you're probably making it even worse because modafinil, St. John's Worts, and capsaicin, which is found in most peppers, can induce, increase CYP3A4 enzyme activity. You see how complicated it gets when it comes to drug metabolism? All of these drugs we're commonly using for our bodybuilding aspirations, and all of them inhibit, induce, or are metabolized by the CYP3A4 enzymes. And that's just the 3A4 group. <laughs> There's many more of these cytochrome P450 enzymes. I'll link them all down below. You need to do your research and figure out what the half-life is, the active life, and how these drugs are metabolized so you can write yourself a timeline on when you can expect to feel better. The next step you need to do is blood work. Yeah, here we go again. Blood work, blood work, blood work. Do your freaking blood work. I'm sick of people coming to me with all kinds of side effects and they're not willing to do blood work. It's not that expensive. It's cheaper than taking all of these performance enhancing drugs. So they come to me, a laundry list of side effects. I tell them to do blood work and they disappear. And then they come back six months later and they're even more than before. All you have to do is blood work. You can get the results in a week or two. And you could have probably gotten yourself fixed in a matter of 20 to 40 minutes. I mean, that's how long it takes for me to interpret the blood work results and go over possible solutions and give you a plan of attack. But all you need is actual blood work results. 
and be completely honest about what you're taking. Because how many times have I heard the same story over and over again? You reach the end of the 40 minutes or 20 minutes, and then suddenly the truth comes out. Yeah, but I was also using drug XYZ, and I thought it wasn't relevant. It's all relevant. It's all drug interactions, and you need to be transparent for me to fix you or for you to fix yourself. <sighs> okay, it's starting to turn into a little bit of a rant, so let me wrap it up for you guys. After your blood work and you see that you're in a decent state of health and you think, based on your own judgment, that you can get away with TRT or HRT, okay, that is the only thing you can run, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. That's testosterone, HCG, and even though it's not completely bioidentical in men, I mean, we produce it in trace amounts, but HCG is predominantly found in pregnant women. Still, it's as close to bioidentical luteinizing hormone as you're going to get. And recombinant luteinizing hormone is expensive and hard to find. So feel free to go with HCG, a low dose of test, 150 milligrams per week. Oh, it's only going to be at the top of the reference range. Yeah, but you were over the reference range and now you're completely miserable. So let's bring you down to something that's clinically accepted. 150 milligrams of test, 250 IOS HCG three times per week, 25 milligrams DHEA in the morning or in the evening, depending on how you respond to that the best way possible or split it up in 12.5 milligram dosages and half the dose let's say 10 to 12 and a half milligrams of pregnenolone feel free to split that up as well cookie cutter hrt no growth hormone no ketoconazole no finasterides no arimidex not anything else and then you just patiently wait until you feel better might it take months yes perhaps but it depends on what you are taking and sometimes People feel better in the matter of a week because they were injecting carrier oil that's highly inflammatory. They get all kinds of post-injection pain. They're knotted to the max. They can't even scratch their own back or their ear, so to say. And then a week after discontinuing the administrations, so assuming that you also discontinue the testosterone in synthetic carrier oil, suddenly you feel better. Suddenly you feel reborn. Your knees don't hurt. You don't feel this horrible test flu that doesn't really exist because it comes from the carrier oil, right? Take a step back and with time, everything is gonna work out. All you need to do is have a little bit of patience and patience is very, very easy. You just fixate on something else. Go play for some video games, go walk outside, go, um, go to a steroid phobic country like Indonesia or Australia or Sweden, go on a holiday there. You can't bring your list of performance enhancing drugs. You have to pass the border without anything in your suitcase, maybe a couple of multivitamins and some vitamin E and uh, N-acetylcysteine, that's it. And then you go on a hike. And you'll probably get some vitamin D and a nice tan out of it as well. Just chill the f out and let everything clear from your system. Oh, and before I forget, I listed all of the half-lives and the active lives of most of the compounds which affect the hypothalamic pituitary testes axes in the post-cycle therapy ebook. So if you don't want to do your research on these compounds, all you have to do is purchase this ebook and you got a whole list of the half-lives and active lives right in front of you. And if you don't want to do the research about hormone replacement therapy, or you don't want to schedule a consultation to discuss that, I got an ebook for that as well. Link down below. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. This is just HCG and HMG in caloric restriction nonetheless. I mean, I'm basically doing like a 2000 calorie HCG diet. I'm still strong, I'm still energetic, I'm still focused. I took all of the other performance enhancing drugs out and I actually feel quite good, but my face does look emaciated. So next week, I'm going to load back all of the glycogen and all of the intramuscular triglycerides when I go on holiday to Bali. So if this face looks a little bit different in the next upcoming videos, then you know exactly what happened. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video and until then just chill the f out take all of those performance enhancing drugs that got you into trouble and throw them in the trash and just patiently wait